Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for years and years and years, are we getting Mr. Shales on the line? Uh, very good. Uh, Tom Shales, a great TV critic for the, the best, Washington really. Post, a Pulitzer Prize winner for criticism in 1988, and uh, a guy that uh, really we've always enjoyed talking to. He is a lot of fun and uh, really, uh, I think, the our favorite part uh -huh. of, of that. Tom Hello. Shales, how are you? Fun, how are you? Uh, this is Mike O'Mara, and uh, you are on the show, and uh, we are introducing you as we speak because that's how we do it on the podcast now. We actually dial you up as we're talking to you. Uh, before we talk to Tom, I do I, I want to share uh, this amazing piece, just out of a lengthy piece. Tom Shales, on the old Don and Mike show, we used to wait for your review of the Kathy Lee Gifford Christmas special. It was, uh, it, it, it brought me, I don't know, I have no idea where the joy came from. Maybe we were uh, kindred spirits when it came to uh, looking at Kathy Lee, but I want to, uh, I really just want to read a little blurb of the of the joy, the joyful review that we would read around mm. Christmas time. Uh, this is written by uh, Tom Shales, I'm not sure the year. Uh, What's the difference between the 24 hour flu and a Kathy Lee Gifford Christmas special? 23 hours. <laughs> nice. You wouldn't want to catch her in either one if you could help it, but when CBS refused to make this year's edition of the agonizing event available in advance to TV critics, one such critic, instead of being grateful for the unintentional kindness, was tempted to tune in anyway to see how or if things have improved, he should have known better. Big mistake. That's just a little piece of it. Tom Shales, welcome, welcome, Yay. welcome uh, to the show. Uh, it's great to, to hear you. Uh, how, first of all, uh, for people that were fans of you and readers of you, what are you doing now since you left the Washington Post? How is life? Uh, give us a, an update for people that might want to know a little bit about Tom Shales right now. Uh, well, uh, I've been kicked down the stairs uh, several times, and then I climb back up again. I uh, I don't know. <laughs> I just hang out. Uh, I'm sort of retired, but I try to do stuff, too. I write for the Daily Beast sometimes. You know what that is? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Sure we do. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and by the oh, way, okay. if you want to, uh, one of the things that, uh, besides just being a uh, writer for a TV critic for the Washington Post, a Pulitzer Prize winner, by the way, uh, Tom uh, also co-authored "Live from New York: An Uncensored History of Saturday Night Live," and uh, it's recently been updated and expanded for uh, the 40th season. Now available at Amazon, you can get that, Fantastic. and that is uh, the, the definitive is work on uh, Saturday Night Live. Tom, I want to talk to you Thank about. You. Uh, I want to talk to you about Letterman uh, because the. Uh, uh, I, I probably drifted away from uh, the Letterman show over the years. Rob hasn't. Rob's watched a lot of it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we're coming up uh, next week on uh, a pretty significant moment in television history. And I know you uh, you get into that. You've been following Letterman for years. Uh, it's a special time, and we haven't, uh, we haven't had anything like this uh, since the Carson uh, retirement. And I think it's going to be really special. What do you think about it? I think you're absolutely right. And uh... – and I think it's the end of more than the David Letterman show. I think this whole talk show thing, late night talk shows are kind of over. They're still going to be late night programming, obviously. But uh, Jimmy Fallon, he's great, he's talented and funny and all that. But does he do, does he really do a talk show? I don't think so. No, he think sort so. of they play games and they play tiddlywinks and they have puppies come out and all that stuff is great. <laughs> but it's not talk uh, show and. The whole idea of talking as a as a form of entertainment, I guess, is kind of dying out. Is that good or bad? I don't know, but it seems to be the case. And you know, Dave, I think Dave accomplished long ago what he what he wanted to accomplish, and he didn't talk about it that much. But you know, he I think he admired Johnny so much because people tuned in to see Johnny. They didn't give a crap who the guest was that night mm -hmm. i mean if it was somebody really extraordinary you know mm -hmm. uh, right if moses came back or something mm -hmm. and then, yeah, well, then we tune in for that but mostly we tuned in to see johnny and don't you think we tuned in to see dave and we didn't really uh, give a, a a rat's ass as he would like to say who the guests were i mean during these last few weeks he's having you know everybody with the pope on to right. say goodbye to him and all that but um we tuned in to see him he's a fascinating guy and I'm not sure that we that people are going to tune in as as faithfully and as fanatically to see to see the Jimmys 
or to see that uh, that fat guy who's on late now on CBS. James What's his Corden? name? <laughs> it's yeah, terrible. that British guy. Horrible. Yeah, he's Absolutely, bad. and I really, I mean, I mean, I, I yeah. looked in for maybe seven minutes, and I just, I, I found, I found it really yeah. uh, unwatchable. Uh, which uh, you know, it's str- is strange. But you're right as far as the art of conversation and uh, having people come out and uh, and really get their their a game up. I mean, I think that you go into a Fallon yeah. show, Tom, and you probably are going to get the writers creating something for the. Uh, stars now, but you don't have. It, it was more with Letterman on the stars, like the Tom Hanks and the Bruce yeah. Willis, who would have their their A material that they get on their own and they bring it. They bring it. They, they bring it, yeah. it to Dave, right? That's not going to happen. Yeah, anymore. yeah. The best guests on Letterman did, did kind of do their own little show. They came on and and what is it? Bruce Willis would ride out on an elephant or something. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> Steve Martin always did something. Yeah, you know. yeah, did Tom, some shtick. And those are the people up, that are coming back. You brought up something really interesting: is that we tuned in to see Johnny, and Johnny was arguably one of the most likable characters on television. Yeah. That's how he painted himself. How is it that we have the same feeling about Dave when Dave seems almost purposely? unlikable and i mean it's not so much <laughs> it's not so much since the heart surgery but for 33 years he has been a curmudgeon and he's getting older and he seems to be getting crankier at times why do we <laughs> why are we drawn to him i think he's been doing a satire of a curmudgeon he hasn't been being a curmudgeon he's been doing a satire of what a curmudgeon would do right yeah, so you have to look at on it as a performance his life is performance art and he's living it on television. And what's what's the guy's going to do when he's not living it on television anymore? I don't know. Oh, I think he's going to be very miserable. <laughs> yeah. yeah when, you are, right. when, when you line up uh, Jay Leno next to uh, Letterman, where, where do you line up on the whole Leno Letterman uh, deal over the years? Uh, were you? I, I would assume you may have been a Letterman guy. Yeah, you know, it, it's a funny thing that uh, remember Leno had that kind of troubled manager, the woman who got him. I think yeah. her name was Helen Kirschnick. Yeah, yeah and Helen she told me right. She told me I helped get Leno the Tonight Show, and how would I have helped him do that? <laughs> well, because every time, he, every time he came to Washington and I worked for the Post, and I would interview him because he was a great interviewer. All he did was tell jokes, and he didn't mind using his material in an interview because he always had tons more material to do You know, in the gig, whatever, whatever brought him to Washington, wherever he would appear, right. the cellar door, which isn't there anymore, for instance. Right. Uh, uh, you know, and he would give me a few jokes to print in the in the paper, whatever. But he's a joke teller, and Dave is a genuinely humorous, humorous, humorous person. He said he's a character of himself. He's he's an original. He's a very American person. He's he's just a fascinating guy, and and I think that the, there's no comparison. Leno told jokes. Letterman, I don't know, was a joke, <laughs> sort of a I living understand. joke. Yeah, no, he's, but he's I mean, kind of a, a nice way. Uh, yeah. uh, would a raconteur would that be a word? I mean, you're you're the word guy. I uh, I'm just uh, I'm thinking yeah. he's he, kind of a storyteller. You know, he and and one thing uh, that I gravitated to Letterman for uh, being in New York uh, as Don and I were uh, with uh, with Rob uh, on nine eleven. Um, he had he replaced maybe some of these anchors that we were were trusting, like the Walter Cronkites. Right. You'd look to a guy like Dave after a national tragedy to say what's what's he going to say about it. And I remember feeling that about Letterman. Never in in on my you know best day would I feel that way about Leno. And he had a way. Uh, Julia Roberts said it this week on the show. He brought some intelligence to uh, to late night television as well. And I think that's what uh, drew us to him. And maybe uh, there are two reasons why I'm trying to figure out why I'm getting emotional watching these Letterman shows. Number one might be what I just said. Number two might be that, that I'm just closer to death. That's, uh, that's the one I'm looking at. <laughs> I'm, I'm closer sure. than you are. I don't <laughs> <laughs> I think a game show out of this. <laughs> That's right. You know, but I, that he had that. Uh, do you think he had that kind of? I don't want to say he's like Walter Cronkite, America's grandfather. But didn't Dave trusted. have? He was. We we kind of trusted him. Yeah. Does that make any sense to yeah. you? Yeah, I think so. I think we did and do. And and uh, who are we going to trust now? I don't think. I don't think the other guys uh, have what no. it takes. In that sense, I mean, I, I, Jimmy Fallon is very entertaining. I used to go up to Saturday Night Live when he was still in the cast, and he would do the warm up, and he would do like twenty minutes of the most, you know, he would do everything: impressions, uh, tragedy. He would do Eugene O'Neill. No, he didn't do Eugene, but I mean, he did everything under the sun. <laughs> and by the time it was over, you were exhausted and you wanted to go home. And then it was time for the show to start. But even I'm just kidding about that. But he really is an amazingly talented kid.
Do you kid. Th- what is he? Forty five now. Go ahead. Forty five. You can call me kid. kid. Go ahead. Do you think one all the, kids to me. Do you think one of the reasons that we have this emotional uh, bond with Letterman is that he really is the last of his breed, and there is an aspect of show business that when this when the they close the doors changed. when they close the doors on the Ed Sullivan <clears throat> Theater, I mean the variety show is gone. The talk show, as you said, in its original inception is gone personality <laughs> radio is gone it's gone as thank so you i thought i'd throw that maybe throw that's that. been gone for years <laughs> i know <laughs> thank you tom i appreciate that no no no, no, I'll, no, no. I'll take that completely personally thank you but <laughs> do you think that the, the the viewers out there they're even realizing subconsciously that this is a this is a tide shift this is the end of an era uh yeah i think that's sinking in and people are people are realizing that and maybe everybody doesn't put it in just those words, and they say, we're going to miss Dave, but they're going to miss a part of themselves. I think you know, with Johnny and with Dave, you read something into them that's part of you, and that doesn't sound like it makes sense. And most of the things I say don't make sense, but you know what I mean? He, he, <laughs> yeah, he, was, uh, he was kind of a, t- a, a canvas onto which you could paint various things of your own, but he was also a distinctive person in his own right. And he was very smart, very smart, and he was always learning. He almost, and he had a, a real knack for American slang and vernacular. I mean, who said lovely before David came? Oh, he, came on there. So well. he said yeah, that was yeah. a lovely party we had. <laughs> he right, brought that right. one back and lots of other. I know he did. Comes. He did. That's yeah. true. That's great. That's a good insight. <laughs> well, I love you, that. you draw the parallel between Letterman and Johnny Carson, and that's there's a great comparison there. I found out since his passing that Johnny was just always trying to learn. He really had an appetite for knowledge, and there is a great parallel there. I seem to remember, and it has been a long time since Johnny retired. During his yeah. last few weeks. There was a little bit of a backlash in the media that they were making too big a deal of it. And since then, I think that has all gone away and Johnny is realized as the the pillar that he is. Uh is is Dave handling this in a different way than Johnny that's preventing that backlash? I don't know. We I guess we won't know until he actually leaves and then we'll see how much we really do miss him more it's getting a little morbid maybe uh, at this point i mean every night yeah. it's kind of awake every night for dave and uh, i think i think he's actually getting i think i was just gonna i was gonna i'm sorry we got we got to skip the little delay there but i was gonna say he looks like he doesn't want to be a guest at his own wake yeah that's the thing that's what's right. frustrating yeah. mm-hmm. it seems to me that yeah. when he handles it best is when they really grab it head on like the nathan lane song about dead inside or when martin short literally did a funeral song for him <laughs> and they t- you know if you're going to eulogize a man do it all the way and it almost bounces back and becomes funny again but it is it's odd there's a weird energy dave cannot take a compliment kenny uh no i think he's superstitious about it i think he feels that if he starts believing uh his own the, the praise he hears that it'll it'll screw him up somehow there was that interview in rolling stone where he said he was thinking about taking uh, antidepressants, but then he was afraid that they would take the edge off of his comedy. You know, there's a certain pain and sorrow and tragedy in comedy. That's an old cliche, but it's still something sort of true. And uh, I think he he had a point there. Uh, Those antidepressants can really numb you out, boy. It's a blissful uh, state, but not if you're a comedian on television. Then it's not... We're we're talking to Tom Shales. Uh, He's uh, America's foremost TV critic. And uh, let's uh, before we let you go here, let's move a little forward, Tom. I'd like to ask you, is there anything you consider uh, must-watch right now? Is there anything out there that you love? Well, the television I grew up with uh, is kind of gone. And I, I keep telling people that whenever I hear that this is a golden age of television, it makes me kind of sick because it's not. <laughs> There's lots of good stuff out there, but it's all, it's all targeted to a particular demographic and, um, uh, there's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But what I liked about the old television, and you can see it now on all these, like there's four channels that do nothing but show old TV. Yeah. And you can see that those writers, they had a, pretty tough because they had to please everybody and it was kind of the same with johnny and with dave i mean these were shows designed to please everybody they nobody can really please everybody but they try and nobody they don't have to do that anymore because the audience has fractionalized so if you're doing uh, uh, some crazy thing about uh, zombies running around the planet and uh, <laughs> taking over uh 
You don't have to appeal to 50 million people. You only have to appeal to 5 million people, and that's not nearly as many. I mean, don't you think that there's something missing now where that old idea that television was for everybody and every, you know, you could turn on any channel and you'd find something you'd like. Now it's much more specific and it's much more targeted to individual tastes and, and particular tastes and not, there's nothing that's for everybody anymore. And that's, I also think that there's no one's going to say, uh, you know, everybody watches Jimmy Fallon. Everybody watches Jimmy Kimmel. Everybody watches, uh, what's his name, Stephen Colbert. No, it's not going to be everybody's, nobody, not, everybody's not going to watch any of those people. But they're going to uh, split up uh, into faction. Do you think uh, Colbert's going to have a good run? Uh, I think he'll have the same audience he has now, only a little bit bigger, but it's, he's not going to take the country by storm. If he was going to do that, he's had, what, 10 years to do that already. So, um I think it was a very boring cho choice, really. I agree. Yeah, um, totally agree. And yeah, another middle-aged white guy. I mean, come on. There's got to be something else out there. It's just CBS playing it safe yep. and uh, not uh, trying to, you know, trying not to change it too much. But uh, it's not going to work. I don't think. I don't think Colbert will be even as popular as Letterman was. Another, I mean, near, not nearly as popular. Another question before we let you go, and again, I've been loving the re, the revision and the new edition of the Live from New York Saturday Night Live book. Mike and I, almost okay. to a to a schedule on Monday, will come in and say, "What the hell is going on at Saturday Night Live?" And you know, it is. It's been that's <laughs> oh, it's an institution so bad. Now, I, but it's I, so I, bad so now. Horrible. Why do you think it has gone that bad? And also, I'm wondering. Do we remember the old episodes funnier than they were? Did they have any weakness, and we just remember that as the golden age? Or has the show really taken a nosedive, as it seems to have? Great question. I think it's, it's regressed into uh, appealing to a younger and younger demographic. Um, and Lauren has sort of said that, that they, they try to catch, the, they, they get their audience when, when kids are like in junior high school. Well, that's a little younger than we imagined uh, the audience wow. for Saturday Night Live, right? I mean, yeah. we thought we were... And uh, I think that's why you and I don't like it as much, because we're a little too old for it. <laughs> old for oh, no, he comedy. said it. I know. He well, said it, ladies of... and gentlemen. We're too... We're old farts. That's why we're not going to like anything anymore. the they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. What aren't we too old for? I, I don't know. It's getting depressing. <laughs> yeah. getting. Do you suppose... That they could, is there any way that they could sort of skew a little older and still have the show be a success, or are we doomed? Do we not get to like Saturday Night Live anymore? Well, look, they had Betty White host once, and they have uh, Louis C.K. is their, uh, is the last host of the season. Well, he certainly doesn't appeal to 14-year-olds, right? So, right? Absolutely. I mean, right. I think, and, and you still have Update, which is basically designed for people who know what the hell is going on in the world and, yeah. and a lot of 14 year olds don't. so you could, you don't get the jokes if you don't know so um i think i think they've amazingly tried to to uh, to you know, i just said uh, nobody pleases everybody anymore but they they try as much as they can to to appeal to a wide a, a wide base and mostly uh younger viewers but after all Lauren is 70, so, uh, he, wow. and he still puts on stuff that he thinks is funny. Um, so I think we're, you know, the show is safe from going all the way to, uh, to becoming uh, just a kid's show. It's <laughs> well, not uh, that. I well, hope. Tom Shales, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you about Letterman and uh, the uh, Washington Post, uh, a massive uh, loss when you uh, left that paper after 38 years. You did a great job. It was always such a pleasure to read you. And uh, I, I will tell you that uh, uh, your pans were about as beautiful as anybody's pans ever. Anybody ever get really <laughs> pissed at you, Tom? Anybody ever call you up and say, uh, you know, I'm going to kill you or anything like that? Oh yeah, yeah, all the time. Well, not all the time, but, uh, but I can't believe that I can't believe I was so mean to Kathy Lee that CBS <laughs> held the show, and then I reviewed it anyway. That was that really was mean. That was just plain mean. <laughs> what I discovered was you couldn't be too mean to Kathy Lee. People wanted me to be meaner still. So amen, uh, amen, hell? brother. Absolutely, one, one, I owe her a lot. One last question about Letterman before we let you go. You've been very generous with your time. I really appreciate it. Now, 22 years after Carson is off the air, 23 years after Carson has left the air, they've done such a great job of keeping his clips in the forefront on uh, the first with the video releases, and now he's got a wonderful YouTube channel. What do you think yeah. Dave's position in show business is going to be 20 years from now? Wow. 
Well, I won't be around to see it. Whatever, I, uh, <laughs> oh, Tom. Who cares? <laughs> no, no, great answer. I, you know, no, Tom, I'm letting you go out on that one. That's fantastic. I'm who sorry. cares? That's I'm no. Sorry. It's beautiful. That's. I, I want to remember you with that last. Uh, that last oh, answer. No. Uh, Tom Shales, you rock. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, and uh, we loved having you on. Love to have you back. Uh, take care, and uh, thanks for everything. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. It's been great. Thank you. Appreciate that's Tom bye Shales, bye. Uh, the TV critic for the Washington Post, and really, wow, uh, that's, who cares? I'll be dead. That's the best. That's the best right there. We will take a break. Come back with more fun and more thrills. You are listening to the Mike O'Mara Show.